how are you doing econ students? This is Jacob Clifford. It's time for a quick practice for response for microeconomics unit three, cost of production. So this one right here is the 2005 form B fee response. All the fee responses that they've released, the College Board has released, are available on the College Board website. So the links are in the description below. You can go ahead and download uh, this fee response. Uh, do the fee response first and then watch this video to see if you actually got it right. Again, the fee response is actually right here. Right here, it's actually right here. Do the fair response, see how you do, see if you understand the idea of cost curves, then I'll go with the answers, okay? Good luck. So, did you do well? All right, let's go over the answers. Here we go. Uh, the graph above shows a short run cost structure for a perfectly competitive industry, and it says identify the cost curves that are denoted by each of the following curve one, two, and curve three. Well, curve one is marginal cost, curve two is the average total cost and curve three is the average variable cost. Note, this is not the fixed cost or the variable cost or the total cost. We're talking about average cost curve. So again, it's marginal cost, average total cost, average variable cost. Notice there's no explaining in this question. This is not like a why, how did you know? This is just, did you get the concept? Do you understand cost curves? But why not explain it since we're here? So the marginal cost you knew was curve one because marginal cost always goes down and up for reasons you'll explain in part B. The average total cost goes down, hits a minimum, and then goes back up. And so that was average total cost. And the average variable cost goes down, hits a minimum, goes back up. But they're not parallel. Remember, the distance between the average variable and the average total gets smaller and smaller. Again, you're asked questions about this later in the free response. So for part B, explain why curve one does the following. It initially goes down and then it starts going back up. So that's a big concept, and it's super important to understand the relationship between inputs and outputs. And you learn about this early on in Unit 3. There's a video I made called, talks about the law of diminishing marginal returns. That's the concept. The reason why the marginal cost curve always goes down and then goes back up is because it's a mirror image of the marginal product curve. Remember, the marginal product curve shows the relationship between inputs and outputs. And as you hire more and more workers, the additional output starts going up. Each worker can produce more than the previous worker because of specialization. Then, each worker eventually produces less additional output because of fixed resources and the law of diminishing marginal returns. So the marginal product goes up, then eventually starts going down, and that's the reason why the marginal cost goes down, because each worker is producing more output. They're more productive, and so the additional cost of those units is going to fall. But since each worker produces less additional output eventually, the additional cost of those units is going to go back up. So to answer the actual question, uh, marginal cost initially decreases because of specialization, because workers are more and more productive as you first start producing. But then it starts finally increasing because the law of diminishing marginal returns, because of fixed resources. Either one of those answers would work here. Fixed resources, the workers have only so many things they can do. Specialization is run its course. So now each worker is producing less additional output, they're less productive, and so marginal cost goes back up. In part C, what is the vertical distance between curve two and curve three? Well. That curve two is the average total cost, curve three is the average variable cost, the distance between them is the average fixed cost. Notice, not the fixed cost, the average fixed cost. So the distance between these two curves, notice they're not parallel, they, uh, the distance in between, the vertical distance in between is the average fixed cost because average variable plus average fixed equals average total. And then in part D it asks, well why, why don't they actually touch, why does the distance between these two curves keep getting smaller and smaller. So basically it asks, why is the average fixed cost get smaller and smaller? And that's a good question. The reason why is because fixed costs are fixed. It's a set number in the numerator. And the denominator is the quantity. So as you increase the quantity, and the fixed cost stays the same, the average fixed cost is gonna keep getting smaller and smaller. It's an asymptote. So again, one more time. If you have a fixed cost that's set as you produce more and more output, the average fixed cost, the fixed cost divided by the quantity, is going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller as you produce more output. The people who wrote the free response wrote the actual answer as one point earned for stating the fixed cost is spread over a larger quantity, so the average fixed cost decreases. Again, you're spreading that fixed cost over larger and larger amounts of output. And finally, the last question in E is identify the letters that represent the short run supply curve. So if you don't know what that is, then you're like, I don't know, no clue, it's either R, S, L, K, J, I don't know. Well, the short run supply curve is the marginal cost curve. So curve one is the marginal cost curve, but not all of it. Remember the idea of the shutdown rule? If the price ever falls below P2, the price falls below the average variable cost, this firm shouldn't produce any at all. 
any at all. Any at all? They shouldn't produce any. <laughs> so if the price is at P2, they should produce it. If the price fell down to P1, they should produce nothing. Right? They should produce nothing at all. So the marginal cost curve above the average variable cost curve is a short run supply curve. And the reason why, it shows the law of supply. As the price goes up from P2 to P3 to P4, right, price is going up, and the quantity this firm should produce should go up, because they produce where MR equals MC. Right? And so the price is the MR, if it's perfect competition. The price goes up, the quantity goes up, the amount that they're making goes up. That, that's the law of supply. That's the idea, right? So the marginal cost above average variable cost is a short run supply curve. But that doesn't even answer the question. The question was, what are two points on the supply curve? Well, the answers are K and L. K and L are the only ones that are actually on that short run supply curve. Hey, if you like these videos, please subscribe, leave a comment right below. Let me know if you like it, if you want me to do something different. Uh, these videos are for you, right? So if you demand it, I'll supply it. Let me know what you want. Thanks for watching. Until next time.